everybody. Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I love this month's paper pumpkin kit. I have made some adorable cards with it other than what it was intended for. And I also made this cute little box that holds two votive candles that I have also decorated to match my card. I'm going to show you how to make this little box and give you a couple tips on the cards that I made. Let's get started. There's just a couple things we're going to need to make this little box. And I've got a piece of our powder pink cardstock, and I did take this out of my inventory. It is eight and a quarter by three inches. And then I've got a piece of this paper that came from the kit. And all I did was I took an envelope and I tore it apart and then cut the piece that I needed out of the inside of the envelope because all the envelopes have this pattern on the inside. This little piece is two and three quarters by one and a quarter. And then I've got one of the wooden embellishments, the hooray, that I'm gonna show you how I decorated. I'm gonna bring my paper trimmer in here and we are going to score this powder pink piece at three quarters of an inch. And all these dimensions will be on my blog post today along with the positively picturesque blog hop. Make sure you head on over to my blog so you can see the blog post if you're not coming there from there to watch this video. So we've got three quarters of an inch. I've turned my cardstock around and now we're going to do three and three quarters, four and a half, and seven and a half. And by the way, big shout out to Sam Hammond. I got this little box idea from her. Now we're going to score at three quarters of an inch on the long edge and then two and a quarter. So I've turned my card stuck around and I'm gonna go at two and a quarter. And I like to score smaller, like the less than an inch this way. And then I turn it around so I can score it the other way. So we've got a score line here, 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 and here. I'm going to take my paper snips now and I hope that you'll be able to see this but I'm going to cut down the long side of all these little tabs and you notice that I just cut a notch out there that just helps your boxes fold up better I like to cut notches out of the tabs so that they will meet better I guess I don't know how to say that but you know what I mean Sometimes we forget about the notching, but it really does help when you fold your box up. You wanna make sure that you're cutting pretty precisely on these score lines or your box will look like a big mess. <laughs> There's no better way to describe that. Have you had that happen? I know I've had that happen and it's pretty frustrating, but I usually do a, um, a sample first to make sure that I'm doing everything right. Okay, now you're just going to fold on your score lines. This box is really easy, by the way, if you haven't figured that yet. It's like, oh, that's all there is to it. Yep, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm just going to fold on all these score lines, burnish with my bone folder. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to stamp images on here, you could do that before you cut and score, or I should say, before you cut these tabs in and burnish with your bone folder, your stamping will turn out a lot nicer. So if you're gonna stamp, the, do it before we're at this point, I guess is a good way to put it. Okay, I like to use liquid glue. You can use fast fuse, you can use tear tape, you can use, um, any of those adhesives, I don't recommend the regular tape runners or snail adhesive because anytime you're doing boxes, that may hold together when you first push it down, but it's not gonna hold together. Tomorrow you will come into your stamp room and all your boxes will be popped apart because that type of adhesive isn't made for boxes. Okay, so I've put adhesive on each one of my tabs on the outside of my box. And now I'm just going to take it and fold these up. Now make sure you don't lay this down on your table because you'll get glue all over it. And so I'm kind of holding it up here in the air and, and square your corners up really good. 
I'm doing the bottom of my box first. And I should have pushed this tab in here before I fold it. There we go, I got it. Nice and square. And with the liquid glue, you only have to hold it for a few seconds. Don't use too much though, because that'll make you hold it longer. The more glue you use, the harder it is. Now I'm gonna close my box, push my end down, and tuck these tabs in. So again, everything is gonna be nice and squared up. When you do it this way. I'm just gonna hold it for a second. There we go. There's our cute little box. Ah. I've got this envelope inside that I'm going to use to embellish the outside of my box. Let's see if I can get that on there straight. There we go. Okay, next I'm going to take some of the Lemon Lime Twist Ombre Ribbon. And this is, again, from my inventory. I just happen to have this ribbon. I'm going to tie it down here on the end of my box. Whichever end of your box kind of has the flap sticking out, that's where I'm going to tie my ribbon. That's going to hold it together and make it look really cute. So get enough ribbon here so you can work with it. And I'm going to tie it snugly. That just reminded me of Snuggly Wuggly. Snug as a bug, Snuggly Wuggly. Okay, now I'm being silly. <laughs> manipulate, manipulate your bow so it looks nice. There we go, and I have one more thing to show you. Powder pink ink, and I'm going to take this hooray, and how I, how I got my wooden embellishments colored is I just took them and I pushed them right into my ink pad. Now you wanna be gentle with these because they are very intricate, and that's gonna turn your word whatever color you'd like it to be. Now, if you happen to have gotten your fingers in that ink at all, which I can see that I did, I'm gonna make sure I wipe those off right away so that I don't get it all over my project. You get mini glue dots inside your kit, so I'm going to pull those out. Here they are. And I'm going to use those on the back of my wooden words. And it really only takes a couple of them to stick it onto your card front or this little box that I've made. This one's going to be a little bit bigger than the original one I made. I used up all my loves. <laughs> so we're doing a hooray. I think hooray will be really cute too. There we go. Isn't that adorable? Now, what are you gonna put in this box? Well, if you had some little candies, you could put that in there. I went to the store and I got some of these votives and I thought it would be really cute to put the washi tape around the outside of the votive to make it match my whole little ensemble here, right? Well, when I put the washi tape on here, it's pretty see-through and it really didn't pop, let me get some on there, really didn't pop as much as I wanted to with the silver case on the votive candle. So then I thought, well, if I put a white layer under there first, so I just cut like a half inch strip of white or whisper white cardstock, and you could use the mini glue dots to glue this around there, or you can get it nice and snug on here and just use a piece of regular Tape. to tape that white on there and then I put my washi tape on and that worked a lot better because it really made the pattern on the tape so you can really see the pink 
X's on here, crosses or whatever you want to call them. So we're just going to wrap that around there, really cute. And these are actually citronella votive candles. So this would be good to give as a little gift to somebody that likes to be outside in the summer. And I thought it would make a great gift for my stepdaughter because she goes camping every weekend. So aren't those cute? That what a cute little gift just to let somebody know that you're thinking about them. Cute idea. And then give you a couple other tips here. I took my layer that has the circle die and I popped the circle out and then I cut it down on both sides here to two and three quarters. I put some washi tape on the top and the bottom. I added that little panel with the flowers behind it and this little grass panel in here. And then I popped it up on the dimensionals that come with the kit. I tied a piece of ribbon, the ombre ribbon around here and put a little bow on. And I stamped these little burst images up both sides. And I thought that was really cute. I, I think this cardstock is pretty cool because on the outside it's powder pink and on the inside it's white. So you could stamp whatever you wanted in there and have lots of room to write. This particular card, this green that's in the background, this is the little note card and that green comes on the note card. So that green is already on here. I took the heart from the die cuts and I popped it out and I put washi tape on it. So I've just striped it with washi tape, added my bow with a glue dot. I put my hooray on here with some um, pieces of dimensionals, stamped you're the best, stamped the little crosses down here in soft sky ink and then these little burst images as well as the banner are stamped in the emerald envy. So again a really cute idea something a little different than what Stampin' Up! had planned for us and that's why I love these kits. I just really love the challenge of coming up with something other than what it was intended for. So if you are not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, I highly recommend this kit. It's a lot of fun. You get all kinds of stuff in here, everything to make these cards. And each month I will have a tutorial available to my Paper Pumpkin subscribers with seven different alternate ideas in it. So this is just going to be one of the alternate ideas that I'm sharing with you today and there's going to be six more of them. So you'll get all kinds of ideas each month to do whatever you'd like to with your kit. These paper pumpkins are $20 a month and they are easy enough that you can do them with your kids, your grandkids, um, the neighbor kids, or yourself and come up with some great ideas. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hop on over to my blog, www.astampabove.com, where I will have all the dimensions and photos and details of these projects for you. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at astampabove.com, and I'd be happy to send you our current catalogs. Add a little sparkle to someone's day. Make them a card and a little gift to go with it. Bye-bye.